All right, guys, today we got a 2007 Toyota Prius. We got the red triangle of death. Let's get into it. So the client's concerns on this vehicle were the red triangle came on with the exclamation point in it. We call it the red triangle of death. The, uh, he drove it here with the light on. Sometimes that works out and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, these cars can be finicky with that and will leave people stranded, depending on what the code is. And he did mention that on his way here, the air conditioner stopped working on it. Don't know if that's related or not, but we'll see. So we've gone ahead and scanned the vehicle. And we can see that we've got several different codes in several different modules. So let's go ahead and just run the report. And let's kind of just scan through these codes. Let's see what we're up against here. All right, let's see here. All right. All right. So we've got some current and some history over here. We've got inverter A cooling system performance, POA93. POA93, those are both current. We've got a history on that. Another current on that. Those are all, if you see, those are in several different modules. So that's in the engine module, that's in the um, hybrid control module, it's in the cruise control module. Uh, I want to look and see what we've got here for analog brakes. There's low battery, positive voltage, or abnorm abnormally high battery positive voltage. Okay, so lower high voltage there. Tire pressure. Looks like we got some transmitter issues. Uh, who knows if they're the original ones or not. Not going to cause the triangle light to be on. Then we got gateway systems. We've got. Let's see here, communication with body ECU, smart key ECU communication, and combination meter communication. Okay, so all of those are history. Could have had a battery issue going on here or something. That says current though on that one. Uh, let's go ahead. I, I will tell you just, all right, from experience, and this would be something that, I mean, we do a lot of these vehicles. So from experience, I know that I'm going after these inverter uh, cooling system codes on it because I know those are turned the right triangle on, I know to cause issues, and I also know that that will cause the air conditioner to stop functioning uh, just because it's trying to keep everything, it's trying to get you where you're going. So it's gonna start taking the things that it thinks are not necessary offline, and the air conditioner is one of those. So we're gonna go ahead and look at this. Now I will tell you, and a lot of you already know that are watching this, like, oh, I see this all the time, I, I know what it is. And that's one of the things that will get you into trouble. So. You know, as soon as we think just by pulling a code that we know what it is, that's the stuff that'll get you putting a part on a car and then you'll be, you'll be, you know, have an egg on your face and we don't want to have that. So as even if you have a car that comes in or so, I will tell you that we've done, I mean, dozens of these and, and with the same failure. That doesn't mean that there can't be a time where something else is causing an issue. You could have a wiring issue. You could have a connection issue. So we need to t still test this out. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to access the uh, inverter cooling, uh, the coolant pump, which is the most common problem here. And we're going to test our powers and our grounds going to the pump. We're going to try to control the pump and we're going to check our amperage going to the pump. Let's see what we got. Right now, we do not have the red triangle on, if we notice, and that will happen sometimes with these. If, if it runs, we drive it for a little bit, uh, it'll probably come on because these are current codes. But let's go ahead and get the hood open. Let's get access to that. I'm gonna be able to get to it from the top, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and start getting, I'm gonna get the scope set up. I got a mess up there with my scope leads. I don't know, that's embarrassing to look at that. But let's get that stuff hooked up, and then, or at least start, I'm gonna watch, let you guys watch me hook up the scope and everything so you can see what's going on. A lot of people wanna see that. I know a lot of you are like, I don't wanna see you hooking stuff up, but a lot of guys do wanna see, you know, how we get stuff, you know, the piercing probes and stuff in. So we're gonna do that on this one. And, uh, and then we're gonna get some data and we're gonna go from there. So let's go ahead and get, get to that. We were gonna show you hooking this up. We couldn't get the camera down in there. It's not really buried. Let me show you where it's at. It's, it's right here, but by the time I try to get my hand down in there and show you guys. So the connector is right there. Mm -hmm. So um, so what I did was went ahead and hooked up to the pump and I put an amp clamp on this side. This is on the, uh, on the fuse for the for that pump so that way I can see everything now in this case 
I will show you. We're hooked up. We've got voltage to the pump. We've got ground at the pump. This is our amp clamp. We can go over here and look at our, and we can see really, nothing's really happening on that, on that pump. On the, if you look at the green, so we see we got a good ground. Other things are coming on and off right there. That's why I just did that. But you can see we've got a good ground. We've got good power. We don't have any voltage drop or anything. And, and if we had something happening on a pump, pulling some amperage, this thing would be doing something a little different than that. We're going to go right here. Just do a little fast capture on it. And then if we zoom in on this, we're going to see we've got something, but there's literally no amps here. I mean, that's what, not even, that's less than an amp pull on that. So, and here's a way that you can look at this. This is so, you could do this with a, with a meter, right? I know everybody says, oh, you're pulling the scope out and all that kind of stuff. I like looking at the amperage and that would be really, really difficult to do with a meter and get a waveform that you could get any kind of data you could use there, unless something's like way crazy high and you can see that it's pulling way too many amps. But we like to see the pattern of the, of the amperage waveform. But you could definitely go into this one and say, okay, do I have power? So we get this code. You're gonna, you're gonna look this code up. You're gonna go into you know, some, some resource. You might look up on Identifix. You might look, you know, Google it or whatever, and you're gonna find probably thousands of hits on this pump that say the pump's gonna fix it. And, and in this case, it's going to, and in most cases, it will. But we wanna check, do we have to it what we need? So we did a, a, a video on one of these previously. It was actually on one of our vehicles where the fuse was blowing. And we were able to show that with an amp clamp, we could show how much the uh, amperage was rising up and then it popped the fuse, right? So in this case, we've got a pump that's just not doing anything. It's just not working. It's got power and ground going to it. It's spinning. It's just not pumping anything, which is why we don't have any amperage. We don't have any work happening. The other thing you always want to do on these is just look inside this reservoir so that pump is running, you know it's running, you know it's got power and ground to it. You don't see any movement inside that reservoir. If you're, that pump's pumping, you're gonna see movement in that reservoir. And that's just gonna tell you, yeah, that pump's actually moving liquid, so. And if it's moving liquid, the amperage is gonna be higher than what, what it is right now because it's actually having to work against something, right? So really, this one was a quick, easy one. Going to put a pump in this thing, clear the codes out. It's going to be fixed. We do have those other codes in there uh, for the ABS. We're not, we know, we're not going to look at that right now on this one. If they want us to, we can. But at this point, we're trying to get the red triangle off, which this is what's going to cause the red triangle to be on. Eventually, this would have caused the car not to run if that pump would have just given out or popped the fuse or something would have happened there. Eventually, the, 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 we would be stuck on the side of the road. So we've got the new pump installed. We've got the leads back on it, the, the uh, red and yellow, or I'm sorry, yeah, red and yellow channel back on it. We've got the green on the amp clamp on the fuse. We're also gonna show you the flow so you guys have an idea what that should look like. Let's go ahead and do that first. All right, so now you can see that's what the flow should look like. So if you pop that cap off there and you don't see that, that pump is not flowing, all right? Get that back on. Let's come on over. Now we remember what the amperage was previously on the um, on the green was next and uh, way under one amp, right? So let's go ahead. We can look at dual scope. We can already see that we've got more than that. But let's go ahead. Just do a quick fast capture here. All right. So this is exactly the same setup that we already had. We can already see there's a huge difference. Let's go ahead. We've got good power. We've got good ground blow up into this and this is a good pump now we can see the pump is moving we can see that we're pulling up into the what three a little over three amps three and a half amps somewhere in that area so um, you know this is this is a good pattern a good waveform it's pulling some amps it's flowing so this is a fixed vehicle and this is why we always like to always like to double check stuff to be sure even though we see the flow and everything just be sure you got everything it takes just a couple minutes save that waveform so you know what a good one looks like so that's it guys, this one's fixed. It was pretty quick and easy. So I hope you guys liked it. If you did, thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification so you know when we drop a, a video and leave a comment down below. We love to read them. We'll see you in the next one.